Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chaberim, shalom. And shalom, Chaber Shali, shalom to Abdiel Ben Lewi, Ben Levi, aka Zion Lex. And some of the recent um, videos and investigations with uh, Tzedek, Tzedek Turdov, justice, justice, righteous and diligent investigations that have gone on. We had did a previous vid where we hailed up Zion Lex on him going into um, this one named Garfield, his, his book about the Bible and about the Hebrews and so forth and so on. And now we find time and opportunity and a, a willing, a willingness to heal up our brother again. Again, Toda, Toda Rabba, you know, a fellow black Yehudi, Yid, you know, Hebrew brother on his practicing of these precepts, seeing a, another brother who we regard to be a, a scholar of Torah from a Hebrew, a black Hebrew, we say a, a Yehudi, black Jewish Yehudi um, community who has countless um, videos, several different videos and going into the Hebrew language, going into Torah, touching on things like Mishnah and Talmud and other areas that our people need to really become more familiar with and to find that even in the recent, um, this one named Brother Polite, I'm not going to get into the allegations or the, the, the alleged because it still is being um, how can you say it's still going through the process right now but um, a one name Brother Polite some of y'all are familiar with who this individual is and you can probably check out more for yourself by just you know searching on the YouTubes but definitely have to first of all just share some of the recent videos that we have gotten to both watch and also hear the key thing is hearing it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Hashem so when I want to heal up brother Zion Lex on his diligence his, his shoftim the shoftim shoftim was a recent Torah portion that we had and shoftim tzedek, tzedek turdof so here we just assembled a couple of um, visuals to kind of highlight, emphasize, and share. And it was this one coming up right here. Some of this is Brother Abdiel's work. Others is our common um, shared heritage, the Ethiopian Hebrew Commandment Keepers Community, Congregation of the Living God, Ethiopian Hebrews Royal Order. Okay, here, here, here. Here we have Shoftim. Shoftim. For our recent um, RSS, Rastafari Sabbatical Study, for that Shabbat, for that strong right there, we touched on Shofetim, 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 Judges, Judges and Officers Shall Thou Make in All of I and I Gates, right? And to see that this particular, these allegations, both the ones by Garfield in his, um, in his pseudo scholarship book, as well as the the rape allegations that have been alleged against someone who's very popular in what's called the black consciousness, some say unconsciousness, but amongst those who are called the black consciousness community and the black conscious community. And also a heel up to, um, was it Tasha, is it Tasha K? Tasha K, I think he also had exhibited some of her works as well in one of his um, videos, one of the videos that he posts on his channel, his YouTube channel, basically just addressing what the allegations were and providing some verifiable um, evidence as far as to give us as the public a better insight into what has been alleged and whether or not, you know, it is true or could be true. Now, most of us won't really perhaps know until this whole case, if it goes forward and it appears to be going forward, concerning um, Brother Polite and concerning this mother-daughter situation. I think he was either in a relationship with the mother and then it is alleged he 
something happened with the daughter. It's alleged that he raped the daughter. And it's interesting because this one who is called um, Brother Polite, he is not he's not someone who ascribes to the Bible. Some of you might have seen the video where he, he had, I think, King James version of the Bible or something and he, and he shot, you know, he shot holes in it, you know, with a, with a gun and everything. This was to show how he, he disregards it while at the same time as um, Brother Abdiel, right, um, Ahi Achshelanu Abdiel, Abdiel is his Hebrew name, Abdiel, Abdiel, a.k.a. Zion Lex had pointed out he one time had studied, you know, studied scripture with, I think, Dr. York, you know, the whole Dr. York, uh, Imam Eats uh, connection. He studied scripture, studied um, Torah, studied the Hebrew, you know, and I think there's, there's documentation and evidence at that time when he was kind of on that level of study until he's got into this particular point of what he's dealing with. Now, this is not going into any of the allegations. And I say allegations because this is what it has been alleged. And the process of, um, I guess, adjudication or it's going through its the investigation process right now. But from what we had seen and what we had also heard and the various different ones and ones who are commenting on this in the so-called blackosphere, you know, of social media, especially on the YouTubes, it was refreshing to listen and also to watch um, Brother Abdiel go into the, the evidence that's out there, you know, and the facts of the case while still restraining, you know, restraining oneself from, you know, as they would say, rushing, rushing to judgment, right, rushing to judgment. Now, once again, just to bring up um, some of the brothers, uh, Here's, we use this one as a still right here because we like to show some of the particular videos that we had um, come across that were very insightful. And the thing that we had commented on, we had commented on the, the fact that Zion Lex was really practicing what we study in Torah. That, that was very, very refreshing to, to see an object lesson of the the practice of due diligence and investigation let me just point to the scripts and we'll be sure to share some of the um the videos some of the videos that he has as well which one should we do first should we share some of the videos so you all know which videos to check out if you choose to check out any of his videos i think we'll do that first right here all right so apologies not apologies but here 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 not trying to blow up the eyes whatsapp right here bro but this is one of I and I fellow um, Chabers, Chabarim, right, Torah study partners here. So we was reasoning on this, and so here's a quick way I can go and kind of share. So, yeah, so I had shared this particular verse right here, this particular verse from the scripts concerning the Brother Polite um, allegations, where it says in Leviticus 18 and 17, remember that Brother Polite, the one they call so-called Brother Polite, He's the same one that, you know, has been so-called going ham, ham, ham in Hebrew means like the hot, ham, like calm, ham, ham. He'd been going hot, right, and ham against the scripture, the Bible, even, you know, kind of used to call it stunting and fronting, but, you know, making a public display of his hatred, you know, to the scripture and his, 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 um, anti you could say anti torah anti scripture you know anti what i and i ones like abdiel ben lewi ones like i and i of uh, loj the lion of judah society you know rastafari yehudi rastafari jews you know he's he's been the anti of that but anyway here's what we found this to be interesting because here's what brother so-called brother polite here's what he is um you know, we don't really, uh, not to call everyone our brother, because everyone is not our brother. You know, you may be our color, but not our kind. Maybe our skin folk, but you're not our kin folk. But here in Leviticus 18, 17, you shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. So when we first heard about the, um, not my brother, polite, you know, sort of case and everything, when we first heard about the allegations, rather, the allegations, 
And we say, wait, that sounds like something right out of Torah. That sounds like something right out of the third book of Moses, right out of Leviticus. I say for Wayikra, right? And he called, as we know that's Hebraically, but Leviticus chapter 18, verse 17, you shall not uncover the nakedness, the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither, neither shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, and it goes on. But the first part of it, where it says, you shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. It's a very disgusting and despicable practice. Maybe we've done it or ones have done it, not knowing this direction instruction, but once learning this direction instruction, right, we have to kind of dead on those sort of misbehaviors. Maybe we did these things because we, we knew no better. But now that we know better, we should do better. So here it says, you should not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. That means if, if a man is seeing a woman and she has a daughter and the daughter says is coming of age or pubescent or prepubescent, so forth and so on, um, and you're with the, the mother, you're not to do no switcheroo and then go with the daughter or be with the mother and daughter. Yes, I know that in this Gentile, Western, whitewashed, Gentile, Anglo-American um, system, the shitstem in the Babylon shitstem, right, in the Babylon system, this is what goes on. You know what I mean? This is what's going on. There's even a niche market for such abominations. Well, that might be good enough for the Gentiles, for the other nations. But well, that's not good enough for Yisrael, for Ionize Israel, for call Yisrael. We were warned of these behaviors and misbehaviors. So how ironic is it that not my brother Polite, right, so-called brother Polite, that this is the exact allegation that he is charged with? Yeah, you know, I wonder whether when he shot up the Bible, whether it, it shot a hole through this particular verse right there. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Now, for all we know, it's just an allegation. As more and more evidence comes forward, right, we'll see how it develops from there. But in this vid right here, just touch on this right here. Okay, so this is a little bit of our communication. Right, our private WhatsApp chat right here. He said, Yes, I watched Zion Lex presentation review of the case. He is the only one that I saw seek out a source. Right, seek out a source. And then he said, I mean to what we shared right here. Let's let's take this off right here. Okay. Uh okay. Here we go right here. All right. All right, so here, 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 once again, once again. All right, a little technical difficulty right there. So, okay, here, breaking news in the Brother Polite rape allegations case. Even as he put it like that right there. Breaking news in the Brother Polite rape allegations. Some are rushing to um, judgment or prejudice judgment. Right, right here, here, here. Okay, this is some of our private text right here. Let's just uh, clear this up right there. Some of our private text right there. Let's bring this up right here. Okay, let's um, let's do this again. Let's go into this once again right here. Okay, let's just do this. See if we can. Okay, okay. So here we go. Here we go. All right, so, okay, we're talking about the WEG right here. It was one of our reasonings that we was having on our platform. Let me, okay, so here's the video. That's what I was going to share right here, right? So I had shared this. This is where we were right here. Yeah, so we had said right here, as you can see, right, we said, um, like, uh, yeah, I've been following up on the alleged rapist brother, polite, right? Alleged. This is all alleged. We're not saying that it is, but this is with the allegation, you know, and already for someone who has an animosity towards the words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name and the scripture and the Bible to see that the very allegations are what the scriptures, the Bible warns us 
and cautions us. You know, like if something said, don't steal, I say, I don't like that right there. Then it's alleged that I stole. Well, you say, okay, that makes sense why he didn't like don't steal, right? Because he's a thief in that sense, right? So it says, and scripture, and the scripture, no wonder he doesn't like the Bible so much, right? So we had actually, yeah, right here said, yeah, Brother Zion Lex, I've been meaning to do a video. He's showing himself to be a good judge in the Hebrew sense. So this is why we just want to not ramble so much here, but just get to the point and share this with some of the Habarim who might be interested, especially in the Garfield and the so-called Brother Polite alleged rape case, right? And Brother said, of course, he studies that. Okay, yeah, we're talking about whether Brother, um, Brother Abdiel, a.k.a. Zion Lex, where he studies like the, like the, you know, the Midrash. The Midrash is some of the um, studies of, like, Torah and scriptures, right? Some of the teaching. I think he's like us who don't get caught up in the hype but studies it to know the truth for themselves. In other words, a lot of people, when they talk about, like, you know, um, Talmud or, you know, a Mishnah or a Haggadah, some of these we could say Judaic or Jewish terminologies that have their, many of their Hebrew roots and origins, there's a lot of misconceptions about what these things really mean. So then we shared with him this one right here, right, as we just showed right here from the scripture, because we had to just search it out and say how interesting, how ironic that, you know, the alleged rapist, Brother Polite, you know, dislikes the Bible, the scripture, and then we have this very thing about uncovering, like having sex with a woman and her daughter, right? Having sexual relations with a woman and her daughter, right? And how that was considered and is considered to be an abomination. So then the brother responded, as we showed just a little bit earlier, that he watched the Zion Lex presentation, the review of the case, and he's the only one that I saw seek out a source, you know, seek out some sort of evidence other than whether he likes or dislikes, because we know that they've had their back and forth, you know, on different subject matters they debated on or spoke on or reasoned on, so forth and so on. Let's see what else we said. So this is the verse that came up so hard in mind on the ledge, so-called, on the alleged, that's what the alleged was a talk to text, so-called brother polite rape case. And then I saw a video where he basically was speaking to the same point with the very daughter and mother in the room 11 months ago. And that's in one of the recent um, Zion Lex um, investigations, inquisition, investigation on whether or whether or not, you know, this alleged race case has any truth, any veritas, any, any verity, if there's any facts behind it. So then the brother had said to I, um, a oh, while wow. he was speaking in agreement of the verse or against it, right? Um, and then I, well, before I caught that message, you know how the messages go sometimes, right? So I said, uh, yeah, so called brother polite, uh, um, like, well, he, so he was talking to texting and he was speaking very fatalistically. This video that we saw on um, some sister's site, I forget her name right now. Like he's not expecting to go this to go so well, but pride and arrogancy seem to have got the best of him. Some of you might have seen that one where he's in like a Rolls Royce or some car vehicle, and he's kind of still showing off. Like nobody expected him to make it. He was a tenth grade dropout, so forth and so on, right? And then we responded to our brother saying, "No, this verse he didn't bring up. He was just talking about the whole rape, this will be rape thing." Um, because so-called Brother Polite talks about the Bible, right? Encourages our, well, well justifies. Okay, the, Brother Polite, he has this, um, many of y'all who are familiar with who we're speaking about, alleged Brother Polite, right? Um, he says that the Bible, like there's a lot of ones who say, oh, the Bible justifies slavery, oh, the Bible justifies rape, oh, the Bible justifies killing a bunch of people, so forth and so on. Not really, not really, you know. Um, so then, yeah, my wife, she sent me a video and I watched a little bit of it. It was really interesting, 
right? And then the brother said, yeah, he saw a video where where he's talking to my brother Polite, sounded like he was losing his marbles. Okay, boom. So just to give you a context, a context of some of the communication, just I think it was just yesterday, a day or so ago. So here, Brother Polite speaks on the charges, allegation against him. This is the one that we had seen right there, right? That particular video, right? And then, so that was him speaking, I guess, for himself. And then Sarnetta tried to warn you all about Brother Polite, but none of you wanted to listen, right? There's members only right here, right? Um, then we have this one right here, the dark side of Brother Polite, open parenthesis, rape allegations and elitist cult behavior, close parenthesis, right? Then we have this one, that's the most, I think, recent one that we saw, breaking news in the Brother Polite rape allegations case right yeah but polite still trying to simp the simple people all right so then we just basically went on you know you know we went on from there you know just let you check that out right there so here's some of the videos once again to check out ones who are so interested breaking news brother polite rape allegations dark side of brother polite rape allegation the leaders cult behavior Sarnetta tried to warn you all about Brother Polite, but none of you wanted to listen, members only. And then, if you want to hear Brother Polite, and this, I think this is his first speaking about it, right? He speaks on charges slash allegations, right? Charges or allegations against him. So here, 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 just picking up on this right here, 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 just want to record a few So here, 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 just wanted to record a few words right here, a few words right here. I um, hope I showed you the video, the video link, right? The video link right there as well. Let's also just share this once again right here. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at justice. In the scripture, previous one was Shoftim. Recently we had Shoftim here coming to the end of the year, coming to the Hebrew New Year, the Rosh Hashanah in the scripture known as Yom Teruah, a day of the of the of the trumpets, the day of the trumpets, right? Day of the blast, Teruah, right? Teruah. I said Teruma, but I said Teruma uh, uh, Sauna Salicha Na. Right? I meant to say uh, Teruah. So we're coming to the fullness of the year. So here we had this particular Torah reading and feeding known as Shoftim. Shoftim. Now here I think this is the, the Makaru, Makaru, Maku, Maka, Maka. I think it's called Maka, Maka. I know even our brother um, Zion Lex has really mastered to a really significant degree um, his ancient Egyptian, you know, studies, the ancient Kemetic studies, Mitzrayim studies, that, that wisdom study that we know that Moshe Robeno was learned in all the wisdom of the Mitzri, right, of the Egyptians, or well, of the Egypts, actually, Upper and Lower Egypt. So here, 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 we pointed this out previously. Let's see if we can just point this out right here, right? Now, the teaching of His Majesty, just to point this out, this is just important just to you know, just to note this right here, right? The teaching of His Majesty. Let's see, uh, see how we're gonna. Okay, here we go, right here. Right? We call this the Rastafari ten words. The ten words. He said, "My advice, Gormawi Nagusa Nages." Right? His Imperial Majesty Gormawi Halasalasi Halasalasi the first. Moa Anbesa Zem Negeri Yehuda, the conquering land of the tribe of Judah. Nagusa Nages Ethiopia, King of Kings of Ethiopia, Siume Xiavia. He said, my advice to all when asked, was the advice to young people, so my advice to all is to fulfill the, what? The Ten Commandments. All right? This is the word, the teaching of His Majesty. The Aseret HaDebarim. Aseret, Aseret HaDebarim. Or in the Amharic, in the Metz of Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, of the Conquering Line of the Tribe of Judah, Revelation 5.5. 5, Asertun Kalat. The Asertun, right? The Ten Kalat. So the Aseretun Kalat refers to the Aseret Hadibarim, the ten words. Now I point that out, I point that out because this is linking right here, is that even with one who is of our, I can say, I say community, 
right? This community that we have in social media, this virtual, let me call it that, the virtual community, right? Because black people nowadays, we live in neighborhoods, so to speak, right? But we've lost that community. But in social media, there's a sort of a community. Those who may be so-called black consciousness and the black conscious community, even though many ones may not ascribe, right? ascribe to these precepts and these principles that we, you know, of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the Order of Melchizedek, LOJ Society, the Line of Judah Society, Ionized Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews, as we ascribe to, we ascribing to because the teaching of His Majesty, His advice to all, right, is to fulfill the Asertun Kalat, the Aseret, Aseret HaDebarim, the Ten Words. So what are these Ten Words? So even in these ten words, you'll see right here, when we come to the ninth word, let's zoom this in right here, the ninth word down here, right? The ninth word says, thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. So we are sort of neighbors in this community. So we're the ones with this ascribe to themselves, I'm a black conscious, I'm in a black consciousness community, or whether some would say unconscious community, in this we are like neighbors, you know? So to be a false witness as though someone has been accused or heard say to do something or have done something and then to kind of already try them in abstentia, even if it's somebody, especially if it's someone that, that we have some, some real differences because they principal differences with. Right? So even this practice is still our, right, our Torah observant practice with others, right? not to be a false witness against thy neighbor, even in the consciousness community, right? or in the black sphere, right? you know, in, the, in the black sectors right? of social media or on YouTubes. Because if you watch and check out a lot of people's videos and what they are saying, what they are alleging, Concerning certain ones like um, so-called Brother Polite, not my brother, but, you know, that's what he's called, Brother Polite, right? Or even others, right, is wrong, and maybe they can do that because they don't ascribe to Aseret HaDebarim, to the Aseret HaDebarim, to the ten words, or to the teaching of his majesty, but those of us that do, right, to whom more is given, more is required. Right, so even in checking out um, Zion Lex Abdiel Ben Lewi, his his videos, right, knowing that they already have strong differences on various different things, right, but still to give that one a um, a, a good investigation and to do it according to the principles. I think this is like an object lesson. That's why I mentioned this as an object lesson. This is an object lesson for I and I right here. Right, and this is why we seek to make you know make mention of it right here. Right, just to go through this right here. Right, just the brother's Patreon, you know, and check out what he's doing as well. Um, and this is like in real time, you know, applying this because one can kind of read about like the Bible and certain things, but not really walk it out or to live it out. It's, it's for that applied purpose. I, you know, apply purpose here with the elder, you know, and um, yeah, so here, 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 let's go into this right here, right, some of the books that the brother has put out as well, like to check it out, now this concerning the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, this is also very important to us as well, we being a member, as well as a duly elected officer in this season, this year, this time. This was a very important document as well, right? Showing the land, right? That land grant, right? To we, the black people of the world. Now, the land was not given to Rastafari or to the Rastafarians per se. It was given to we, the black people of the world. Now, among we, black people of the world, some of us, right, are self professed Rastafari. There are others. Right, that might not be self-professed Rastafari, but if we, the black people, especially in these Americas and Caribbean, this is one of the, the evidences 
right, of what the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, the king of kings of Ethiopia has done for I and I. And this here is the one that was given to um, um, Eli, you know, Eli, Eli Bivens, right, Bivens, someone who we had uh, address, you know, especially when we touch on the Korah, on, 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 on that Korah, you know, on the whole Korah rebellion. Let's see if we can bring this up right here, right? On the Korah rebellion in the scripture, some might agree with us, others might not agree with us, right? Among some of our brothers, whether the Hebrew, Israelites, whether the ISUPK, or whether even um, Zion Lex himself, which I think that would be a very interesting discussion to really have concerning Ethiopia, the commandment keepers, right? Especially from the perspective of those of us as Rastafari, Torah observant Rastafari, who see that Yehudi, that Judaic, that Torah, um, and even that orthodoxy link to I and I as Rastafari, as called, chosen, and faithful Rastafari. Let's go down here and just show this. So here's, here's the one named Bivens. He was a part of that commandment keepers congregation. Right here's his brother Zion Lex's his logo right here. Now this is Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew. So here's a we we have shared we say shared roots, right? The shared roots, right? The Ethiopian Hebrews, the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, the Commandment Keepers, Congregation of the Living God, right here, 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 right? And also it's that book, um, the Black Jews of Harlem. That's the book that we have pointed out. Now this is when. You know, when he ministered from Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew, served from 1919 to 1973, something about 1973, 74, something about that whole time right there, there, there. One of our brothers, he has a Jehovah Witness, um, this background. And I know in the Jehovah Witness, some of their documentation, they point out like 1914, they point out um, like 1974, 75. In some significant aspects, and many others might look upon them like crazy, but when we now look at the other half of the story of the Israelites of Ethiopia, we the black Jews, right, of the line of the tribe of Judah, we start to make those, those um, other, the half of the story that they don't include, right, when the Western whitewash, Gentile, you know, um, white Jewish and, and white Christian. That whiteness and that white supremacist and white privilege attitude has clouded them to allow these essential truths. This is why it's so important that we kind of link with our, you know, ancestors before us who were in this tribe. And this is something very important here in the LOJ society among us as Rastafari Torah observant Jews that these are like our real roots, right? And the influence overt and covert within Rastafari cannot be and should not be minimized, right? But it should be emphasized right here, here, here. Community before the 1930s known as the Morris Zionist Temple of the Morris Jews. Now that's uh, Rabbi Mordecai Herman, I think so, yes. And this is a community then. And even if we look at, if we look at the flag in the background, you see that flag in the background, some would say the state of Israel, but this is back in the 1920s. I think roughly 28, 29, 1920s. All right, so that's long before 1948. So to see our people having this heritage and then other peoples, all right? That's what the scripture says. Um, there's a quote by Rabbi Shaul, Rav Shaul, a.k.a. Kedus Palos, you know, the apostle Paul. You know, where he says that um, he will provoke us to jealousy. He's quoting the prophet, Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah, Isaiah. And he says there that will provoke us to jealousy by people who are no people. Right? So these are other people who also ascribe to this, we say, Hebrew or Jewish, you know, heritage. Right? So you can see the flag there. That's Rabbi Mordecai Herman. Right there, there he goes in the window. These are historic photos. Right? You can see the flag right there on display. I think this is one of the brother Abdiel Ben Levi, Levi, his book there. I'd like to check out some of his books as well, seeing that we agree on many areas. There's some areas I like to talk to him about, you know, as well. But right here, 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 let's just link this. This is his logo right here. And this is also interesting right here. 
this still right here. You can see they has this book, The Black Jews of Harlem. Very, very important book. Very, very important book. Right? We, the Black Jews of Harlem, witness to the to to the white Jewish, I think, race myth or something like that is the subtitle. Right? Very, very important book as well. Right? And you can see the one love, his father, you know, his earthly father is a Rasta man. You know, as well. That must be interesting. I like to reason with him on how how that goes. You know, as well. But um, here, here, here. Let's just get through this right here. Okay, so we're on the show team, right? Show team, right? Remember His Majesty's advice, right? To fulfill the Ten Commandments, right? Fulfill the Ten Commandments. So here, here, here. Using this as a point of reference since it was our recent Rastafari sabbatical study, right? Here, 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 the podcast, um, blog talk, uh, radio, forward slash LOJ Society. So here, just in a few minutes here, let's touch on the link with the scripture. We are instructed and directed in the scripture, especially in HaTorah, right, to do such due diligence. And when seeing a fellow, a fellow brother, another brother, another Haber, another Talmud, right? Another one doing this and, and showing and proving this. It's, a, it's an inspiration, it's an encouragement, and we like just to duly note it, right? So here, 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 as we touched on this right here in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 14. Now, this comes from the Torah reading and feeding known as Re'e, 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 Re'e. Right? which means to see, seen to see. Right? It picks up from Deuteronomy chapter 11 at verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a baraka, ukalala, a blessing, baraka, a baraka, and a kalala, and a curse. But it begins with re'e. So this Torah portion right here is a Torah portion that this quote, most recently, we had covered this particular quote and then after that came Shoftim, right? After that came Shoftim, right? And so here we're at the 50th, so that was the 49th, 48th, 47th, right? The 47th Torah reading and feeding. So here's, here's the quote right here. Let's put it into better context, right? So picking up right here from verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 12. If thou shall hearsay, now what is hearsay? Hearsay, there's a lot of hearsay. If you hearsay, one has been charged or accused of doing this or that, right? Hearsay, it might be true, it might not be true, right? And we apply this here to even, you know, the alleged, you know, rape case and allegation with so-called Brother Polite or even the alleged so-called scholarship of, of Brother so-called Garfield, his pseudo-scholarship, which... Brother Zion Lex had also addressed right, in a very Torah observant way, right? Actually applying these precepts and principles. But if you if you or if thou shall hear say, so hear say, in one of thy cities that Jehovah thy power, Yahweh Loheka, hath given thee to dwell there saying. Right? So you hear say. Certain men, children of Belial, 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 worthless men, Bamarinya, Menamnete Sawoch, or Blear, interesting Belial and Blear, interesting connection, Prince of Belia, right? But like Belial, just to bring this out right here, worthlessness, good for nothing, unprofitable, base, like, like low, low down, you know, yeah, we could use different words, but just to keep it. You know, on a level right here, without profit, Belial, right? Worthless men are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city. So in their city, in their, in their area code, so to speak, in their hood, right? Saying, let us go and serve other gods or other Elohim, Elohim Acharim, like senses like gods that came out afterward, after gods, you know, like mental constructs that men and people make to be gods, right? Not the true power, but other ones they ascribe power to. That ye have not known, right? Then bringing now here to our subtext, 
So putting this part into context by reading the verses leading up to this, it says, if that be the case, then thou shalt inquire and make search and ask diligently, and behold, if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you. All right, so here's a couple of key words right here. It says, then shalt thou, all right, and this is also the instruction to the team, to judges, and to, to us to, to judge by righteous judgment. Not to judge by appearance is how it seems, or by what we heard say, by some hearsay, but to inquire. So the first word is to inquire, and that word is darash. Darash. Now, darash is the root of midrash, like the midrash. Some of the Chabarim know that we go into the midrash on the royal order, the daily psalms, right? According to the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews on the podcast, we get into the midrash. Now, midrash in that sense is like the study. The bait midrash is like the house of study, like school. But darash here means to resort to, to seek, to seek with, to care, inquire, require. Right? To resort to, to tread, to seek, to inquire, to seek, right? To seek by deity, to seek a God or deity in prayer or worship. So even our study is like worship. But here, to seek with a demand, demand, require. But look at the fifth entry, to investigate, to inquire, to ask for, to require, demand, to practice. The seventh entry study follow seek with application so in our study of the torah it's not like people would say religion like in a religious sense because a lot of ones in this western whitewashed gentile counterfeit christianity and like judaism whitewashed judaism they got this idea of you know ones in the bible the torah the scripture and religion but for us as as yid as yehudim right as yedim as as, as Judahites and as, as Hebrews, right, and being rooted and grounded is to apply, right, seek to apply, seek to apply with application and to see that Brother Ahshalanu Abdiel ben Levi, that he actually has done this and is doing this, especially in the most recent cases that he has taken on on his channel, is an interesting application. Right of this, right to allow oneself to be inquired of, to require, to seek out. But now, getting to the strongest definition from a primitive root, no doubt Ethiopic, we have derese in the royal Amharic and come from the Ethiopic root. Derese, darash, darasha, derese. Right to tread, to frequent. So derasen, right? Derasen, derasen. If I say in Amharic, derasen, like we reached. Like we was traveling somewhere, Derison, right? We have now reached where we were going, where we was trying frequently to follow for pursuit or to search. By implication, you gotta learn how to read the Strong's entry. By implication, because in some cases we'll find this root, Darash, and the context will mean to seek to ask. And in some cases, it has to do with what is called worship, like worship. Right, to seek. So in sending the Midrash and studying, as Rav Shaul even said to his Talmud, his disciple in the New Testament called Timothy in the Brit Chadasha, he's known as Timothy, that is the student, the Talmud, the disciple in that sense of Rav Shaul, aka Brother Paulos, he says to him to study to show yourself approved. So even in our studying right, of Scripture, the Midrash, Right? That is a form of worship, right? the study. A lot of ones don't recognize that that study right? and that diligent study, that observant study, is also a form of worship. But here the context is to inquire, right? to inquire. So the first is to inquire. Then it says to make search. Right? Make search is chakar, chakar, right? the chakar, the H2713, the chakar. To search, to search for, to search out, to examine, to investigate, to search, to search through, to explore, examine thoroughly, right? That which is searched out, the nephile, the different senses of the verb. Here we have the strong's definition, a primitive root, properly to penetrate, like they say, go deep, to penetrate, right? Hence, to examine intimately. So bring out the sense of hakar, the hakar of the Hebrew, to penetrate. 
in this context, it means to examine this intimately, right? To find out, to, to search, to make search, to search out, to seek, to seek out, for it to be sound, healthy, to be tried, the haqar, the haqar sense. So we have one to darash, inquire. Then we have the midrash, to study. The second, the haqar, to examine, to penetrate, to to examine intimately. Then we have here, and ask, Sha'al, Sha'el, 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 in one sense appointing Sha'al, to ask, right, to ask, to inquire, it can mean to borrow, beg, well, that's how it's been translated in some areas when it says that the Israelites had, had borrowed silver and, and jewelry. No, it basically ask, right, to ask, right, to ask. Let's go down right here, right, get to the root to inquire to request to demand right to ask right but it says to ask diligently so the word the h3190 is yatab yatab now yatab is an interesting word from tob tob right tob is good yatab yatab now yatab in the hebrew links with ethiopia's um archaic name tobia tobia a Hey Tobia, hey Tobia, hey Tobia, hey Tobia. That's he Hebrew actually. Hey Toba, hey Toba, Ethiopia, Tobia. So here, from the Hebrew sense, in the Israelites of Ethiopia, they call themselves and they call the land Hey Toba, Toba, Tobia. Like we have Tobia, Tobias in the scripture, right? And the Greeks, the, the Greeks when they came in, they heard this and they interpreted. It into their language. This, this happens often. You hear some word, you hear us go through a Hebrew word, and it sounds like something that you only know in English. You might make a association or a misassociation like that. But here we have yatab, right? And yatab, good, well, pleasing, good, right? right? To make good, well, to do it right, to do it good. The primitive idea of yatab is to be, right? To make well, to make sound make it healthy, right, in a figurative sense, happy, successful, acceptable, but notice what it says right here, notice the context of what it says right here, it says, thou shalt inquire and make search and ask diligently, so even here we see the fingerprints of Hashlush HaKadosh, HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, the Hebrew Trinity, the Holy Trinity, he who be, who you be, here in the threefoldness, threefold chord, we have inquire, right? The inquire, darash. We have search, hakar, and ask diligently. But note that the word diligent here, diligently here, the H3190 is yata, right? If we go elsewhere, let's just go elsewhere right here. We got to bring this up again. Let's go over here. If we go elsewhere, no, not ISV, no, a KJV, there we go. We go elsewhere, notice it's right here in, in Deuteronomy 11 and 13, and, and it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently. Notice the word here, shama, 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 to hear, shama, like shama Yisrael. Here in the 22nd verse, it is shama, so we have shama, shama, to hear shama, and here we have shama, shama right here is the guard to keep to observe, like to hedge about, getting to its primitive root, to hedge about, like with thorns. That's a sense of to guard something, to protect it, to attend to it, right? So we have diligent here, right, is the H8085, right, which is the Shema, 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 Shema to here. And here we have Shamar, the H8104, two different words. But, and then here we get to here in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 14, and we have the H3190, which is yatab. So that means in the KJV, you come across a word like diligent or diligently, and we just showed you three examples, three examples from Deuteronomy, where in the English it's the same English word, yet when we go to the... Um, the source text, right, those are the Hebrew, 
we find three different words because there's three different contexts to what it's saying. So the translation is not always one-to-one. -one. Just to point that out right there. But it says first to perform this threefold, right? This threefold kind of investigation to inquire, to search, and to ask diligently or to ask good. Notice that right there, to ask good. Let's bring up the Hebrew right here. Let's go down here, right? And we have this. It says, with darashta. We hakarta, we shalta, hate ave, hate ave, hate ave, hate ave. So it says to darashta, the I male, with darashta, with darashta, with darashta, is to search out, right, to midrash it, like to study it, with hakarta, right, and to examine it thoroughly like penetratively, get, get in, right? With sha'alta heitev, heitev, heitev. Sha'alta heitev. So it says sha'alta. Sha'alta is like sha'al, like to ask, like you ask, you know? But to ask in a good sense. To ask in a good sense. That means not to have like a prejudicial, um, a prejudicial uh, judgment. You see, when, when Robeno Yeshua in the Brit Hadasha, when he says there, he says, he says, um, judge not. The real context of that from the Hebrew, the real context of that is don't condemn. I think even the Koine Greek brings out that sense, like don't condemn. In other words, judge with the good eye, not with the bad eye. You know, like if you already dislike somebody and you hear they done did something or accused of doing something, you might be easily liable to, to believe it because you, you, you dislike them. They're your enemy anyway. Well, that's not tzedek. That's not tzedek. That's not righteousness. That's not righteousness. Mm -hmm. And we're commanded tzedek, tzedek terdof. Justice, justice thou shalt pursue. Right? That which is right. That means Bethsedek. We should judge Bethsedek. That means with the good eye. Because if you judge with the good eye and there's bad things there, they're going to show up. Right? And it's going to be such a contradiction to you're, you're looking at it with the good eye. You're looking for the good. Right? And by looking for the good, right, Bethsedek, you'll find all the rest. But when you start to look with the bad eye or the evil eye, right, the Ein Hara, Right? Then you're going to find things and you basically maybe will be deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, because this person happens to be your enemy, that becomes like, um, that becomes like a false witness. You're bearing false witness. That means if you are co-signing something that they did that would have a just penalty of death, that means that you are forfeiting your life by condemning in that way and even if one is not literally for forfeiting their life don't you think something goes on in the heart the mind the soul the psyche no wonder it seems like so many people are cray cray crazy think about it for a moment it says thou shall inquire and make search and ask diligently and if it be truth if it be what? If it be Emmet. Emmet? Amet. Like Emmet Till. Remember Emmet Till? His name is a Hebrew name, means truth. Right? Firmness, faithfulness, truth. Sureness, reliability. Stability, continuance, faithfulness, reliable. As spoken, or as a testimony and judgment, or as divine instruction, or truth as a body of ethical or religious, you say spiritual knowledge. True doctrine, true teaching, right? In truth, the emet, right? The emet, that's the adverbial sense, right? And this word here, looking at the Strong's right here, stability, certainty, truth is, is trustworthy, right? It's established, right? It's not hearsay, right? It's not judging by a parent. Oh, he looked guilty, right? Well, maybe he does, but that's, that's, that is not... The scripture and Torah teaches us tzedek, righteousness, and to do it bad tzedek, 
right? So Aman here is the root Aman, right? Ras Taman, right? Right, Aman here, support, firm, confirm. This is the root, right? This is the root word, support, confirm, be faithful, uphold, nourish. Interesting, Aman in the Hebrew is a force to follow, a force to mother, pillars, support for the door. But getting it down to, let's bring it down here to the, right? A primitive root, right? This is a, a primitive root, right? To Aman, right? To build up, to support. And also in the sense of like a parent or a nurse or a foster parent, like to foster one, to build them up, to render them and make them to be like firm, right? Make it to be trustworthy and true, right? Permanent, right? So here, 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 it's going through that right here. And the thing certain, right? And the thing kun, the thing right here is the word dabar. Dabar, some modern Hebrew say davar. But the ancient pointing of the Hebrew is Dabar. If it is Dabar, right, that's the word, the speech, the speaking, the thing that you heard. If it is Kun, if it is Kun, 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 not that Kun you talk about, right, right, but we're talking about firm, Kun, Kun, right, it's firm, right, it's firm, it's established, right, it's erect, it stand up, right, the evidence stands up. Right, it's, it's, it's stand up, it's firm, right? That such abomination to eba, right? To eba, something disgusting, ah, right? A bond, in a ritual sense, right? An ethical sense, something that's disgusting, right? Abhorrent, right? To ab, even idolatry, like it's an idol. Could remember the same one, not my brother, so called polite. You know, he says that his God, his God, the black woman is his God, right? And then it seems to appear from the allegations, right, that that was the hook, right? That was a hook right there, right? But to loathe, to ob, to ob, something loathe, loathing, detestable, disgusting, right, has gone on. Such as the case of the mother and the daughter having a mother, right, you know, and then having a daughter. Now, we know that amongst the lost sheeple, right, not having this real Torah instruction and becoming observant in Torah and studying to show oneself approved, we've fallen into a lot of things. But we know that these things are kind of popular in the world, as it were. You know what I mean? But that's the astray way. That's not Yahweh truth in life. So such abomination is wrought among you. Then it goes to the judgment. The next verse, it says, Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword. Now, this is talking about the context here seems to be among Israelites. Seems to be apl applicable here among Israelites. But one's like, not my brother polite, he'll be like, see, what kind of God are you serving that would destroy and kill people just because they did a few things here or there? It's, it's one's not really understanding the consequence of, of such um, actions or deeds or misdeeds. But here's a key verse where it says, thou shalt inquire, make search, and ask diligently. And if it be truth, and the thing is certain, that such abomination is wrought among you. So this here teaches us that there has to be a certain procedure to even go about our investigation. Let's just get the Hebrew right here. We darashta, we hakarta, we shaalta, heite, we hine emet, nakon hadabar, nakon, from the root word kun, but here, nakon, 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 if it's true, if it's, if it's correct, nahon hadabar, right? If the word hadabar is correct, ne'esta, 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 ha to'eba, that this, this abomination to'eba, ha to'eba, that the abomination that we heard say, what we heard say, right? It really proves to be true, right? Hazot, be kerbeka hazot ha toeba hazot the abomination of this that this abomination ne esta ne esta so so far we just heard some things say we just, we, we just heard say 
this has been heard saying also seen some reports where some news services are reporting you know on this as well but this is still at the present time hearsay and ones are going through investigations and some are doing good and and do you know due diligence such as Zion Lex for example also Tasha K as we mentioned earlier as well right so these are principles here and to see these principles actually walk down and then we just had concluded the Shoftim Torah portion so it's still fresh you know in our you know fresh in our minds and then here is another example of it where it says and if it be told thee it's so like the telling the hearsay right if it be not God not God right like not God not God, right something told or declared right and thou has heard you've heard you know somebody tell you something is that how it happened somebody tells you something right even through social media somebody told you something right and you either watch or listen to it and you heard it right and inquire diligently you get that word inquire diligently so here we have darash again darash the root of midrash midrash the hebrew word for study right one of the words for study yatab so yatab once again even here before we had to ask diligently so some would interpret that when it says to inquire, to search, and to ask diligently. It's not just to ask diligently, but to inquire diligently, to search it out, to examine it thoroughly, intimately, diligently. Right? Hey Dave, hey Dave, hey Dave. Right? The hey Dave means like in a good sense. Right? That means with no bias or presupposition in mind right and behold if it be emet if it be true right and nakon hadabar and the and the thing the dabar that word that we heard the matter the situation if it be nakon 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 if it be certain if it be stand up the evidence stands up it proves it even if we're trying to say well no this one didn't do it how could he do that let me look at the evidence and as you go into the evidence and you're seeing all the proof you're like Wow, I'm, I'm, I wasn't looking at it to condemn the individual. I was looking at it to figure out what is going on. Is this really true? And all the evidence is proven that it is emet, right? Is emet nakon hadabar, and the thing, the word is certain. That such to'eba is wrought in Yisrael, in Israel. Now, of course, after this, there's a judgment, right? Of course, after this, there's a judgment. Right, let's just look at this right here, just for say, right? And it says, Then thou shalt bring forth that man or that woman. So it could be a man or a woman. It's not like just just something against women, you know, like it's sexist or it's just against men, right? Like it's unequal in that sense. No, a man or woman that have committed that wicked, that ratchet, that rara. Is this the word rara? Rara. The rara, rara. That rara. Right, that rah rah, that hurtful, that evil, that bad thing, right, to the gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Now, of course, one's reading this, they say, Oh, that's that Old Testament, that's how it was in the past, and all they're looking at is the counterfeit Christian, whitewash, Anglo American misconception of this Bible in other words we've been living in their 400 year nightmare right now we have to get to know the truth for ourselves at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death but at the mouth of one witness this is important right here at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death he or she since it's a man or woman so one witness is not sufficient in matters of judgment these are precepts even coming down to common law that we have even in this western gentile like anglo-american laws that are good but they have their roots within the scripture right and then it says the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death so it's not like over here where they hire people to do a job and act as executioner or prison guards or this or that. No, 
there is a whole other system which says that the community is involved in the judgment, but it's not just because you heard say something or because somebody looks guilty, but it is because due diligence, it says due diligence to inquire, to search out the matter, and to ask, right? Any witnesses, anybody know anything, right? And it's also encumbered that if one has heard something about something, and the judges, the Shoftim, who are also known as the Elohim, that's interesting there as well, they are seeking to find the evidence for it, and you know about it, and you don't disclose what you know about it, and you find out later on there's a judgment for you because you're ratchet, you're hurtful. People say, well, I don't want to say nothing. See, that's the Western Gentile. We have to come out of Babylon, come out of her, my people. All right? It says, after we're the hands of all the people, so first the witnesses, those who are born witness to this, there's, there's a, a communal responsibility. So thou shalt put the evil, the hurtful, the bad thing away from among you. All right? Now, let's just go over here once again. And there's one more verse we'd like to share. Let's share this from Judges, uh, not Judges, but Deuteronomy 19.18, speaking about the Shoftim. Right? And speaking about what we see in our Achaber, right? what we see in Avdiel, a.k.a. Zion Lex do, at least in these two recent set of different cases. One, pseudo-scholarship right? on trial, um, so-called Brother Garfield, and here the alleged rape charges against so-called Brother Polite. Here it says the Shoftim. Now, they bring up Shafat. See Shafat? Shafat means to judge, to govern, to vindicate, to punish, to act as lawgiver or judge or governor of, of Elohim or man, to rule, to govern, to judge, to decide controversy, to execute judgment, discriminating, vindicating, condemning, punishing, right? The theophanic advent for final judgment, right? To enter into controversy, to plead, to have controversy, to be judge, a judge, show fate, or an opponent at law. Now here the primitive strong sense is judge. That is to pronounce sentence. You see how the, the words that are italicized? So shafat is the act of judging and shafat is also the sentence that is pronounced, word, sound, power, for something or against something. Words of our mouth, meditation of our heart, humbly acceptable. Right? In Hak Ados Baruch Baruch Hashem Sai. By implication, so what's implied by this process of judging and pronouncing sentence is either one is going to be vindicated, one who has been accused or falsely accused or charged with a crime that they didn't commit, or it being true, right? Emet Nakon Hadabar, and the matter is certain, it stands up, they be punished. By extension is to govern, right? In a passive sense, to litigate. Like if you litigate for your client, right? Why, why is my client innocent of these particular charges? You see, and any people who truly are a people have to develop these, these mental, right? Um, you could say mental, psychological. They're, they're actually spiritual um, faculties, spiritual faculties of the mind. Right? To come off that savage. You know, there's a lot of our people who are calling themselves conscious. It's like they're savage beasts and brutes. They're conscious, but not at a very high level of human consciousness. And this is what the Torah teaches us. And the Shoftim shall make diligent. Look at the word right there. Yatab again. Inquisition. Darash. Darash. Right? And behold, if the witness be a false witness. So that means we're supposed to look at the evidence. See, witness is like a person. But the same root Hebrew word, if it's a person, it's a witness. If it's something that's written or some other evidence, it can be considered a testimony. Now, the witness can give testimony based on what they have said and what's being written and recorded. Right? Or they can, you know, but they're the witness giving that testimony. Or there can be documentation, evidence, docs. And the docs there are the testimony. But if it be 
found right, that the witnesses be a false witness, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, this is the key right here, against his brother, right? So in that sense, we don't regard so-called brother polite as our brother brother in that sense. But just for the sake of the context that we're speaking of in this consciousness, you could say black consciousness and the consciousness and unconsciousness community, let's say so. Then shall you do to him as he thought to have done to his brother. So the same thing thought, because remember Brother Polite went hard, he went ham, he went ham, hot, ham, hard against, um, against GMS because of how some had interpreted certain scripture. He said, oh, that's like the Bible is justifying rape and so forth. And then he had shot up the Bible with a gun and all that kind of, you know, fugazi, what you call that? Although that was telling us, right? So think to have done to his brother, so shall thou put evil, the rah-rah, the hurtful, right? the hurtful, the ill, right? things away from among you. And those who remain shall hear and fear. They have respect not to do such thing. You know, like people get on social media and just maybe lie on people or, you know, troll people or whatever else. Because, you know, there is no reverence of any, of any judgment. They figure, well, I can get away with it. You know, under Babylon laws, you keep doing it because Babylon, what's the meaning of Babylon? Confusion. And shall henceforth commit no more any such rah-rah evil among you and it further goes on to say and thine eye shall not pity but life shall go for life eye for eye tooth for tooth hand for hand and foot for foot now i'm not going to get into martin lucifer i mean martin luther king jr his misunderstanding of this right even though he walked with some white jews by right, carrying the torah and everything i don't know if he really observed right observed the torah Right? So here, 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 we're going to just sum this up with now Moed. Look at Moed. Moed means like very much, very much in Joshua, but take very much heed, diligent heed, to do the commandment and the Torah that Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, of Jehovah, of Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, charge you to love Yahuwah, Jehovah, your Elohim, your power and to walk, to try, to walk it out, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So here, 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 just sealing up on Joshua right there, 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 because this is about, you know, doing due um, diligence, right? And, and this Torah reading and feeding right here was Shoftim, Judges. Right? It connects with Psalm, was that Psalm 82? We have Psalm 82, I think it's the six or so verse. I've said, Ye are Elohim, all of you are B'nai Elyon, all of you are sons of Elyon, of the, of the highest. That's an interesting psalm there because a lot of people say, well, the Bible says we are gods, but they're not understanding that the Elohim, the Shoftim, the Judges, they were to judge, right, according to the directions, instructions, the ta Torah, the Torah, direction, instruction of Ha Elohim, of the true good, the true God, the true power. So here, 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 my Shoftim, going through this here, and we're going to fulfill right here, giving thanks to um, our brother right here, you know, going into, you know, the, the scripts and studying. We'll, We'll seal up right here. It's a good example for our other brothers. You know, we can learn some very important um, um, principles and precepts that we can apply to the nine plus areas of people activity. The nine plus areas of people activity. All right, so here, here, here. Toda Raba. Allah Shalcha, you know, give thanks for that work that you put in, Brother Abdiel Ben Lewi Ben Levi, yes I, aka Zion Lex. Looking forward, right, to 
the updates. Yes, sir. Give thanks for that due diligence.